al fresco. Check on, chef. Thank you. Larder, on order. One warm chicken salad, one vegetable tureen. Fish cook, on order. One cocky Saint Jacques, one seven two glare. Sauce yes. cook, on one hundred got four delays. One full of the lamb with mustard sauce. Two pieces of lamb on order. from my house next door. Ah. It's just given me a lovely idea. How about a barbie? Sounds a bit good to me. Yeah? Yeah, except that always the meat gets a bit done on the outside and a bit rotten on the inside. Yeah, you've had problems, have you? You could say that, yes. I'm really? Not actually, yeah, barbecues are always a bit more, more romantic to sound than they actually are to eat. Yeah. Well, I think we can change that. I mean, the first thing that we've got to do is make sure we get the right meat, because that's very, very important. You get mm. bad meat, you've got no chance. You can't work miracles with a piece of bad meat. Shall I take you somewhere that I know that sells really good meat and show you what you should be looking for. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah, right, let me lead you through the array of meats. Oh, uh, right. Yeah? Okay. Lovely display. When we're looking at beef, uh -huh. in particular, there are certain key things that we need to look at. Now, if you look inside the meat there, yep. you'll see there's little specks of white, and that's, that's called marbling. And that's actually fat running in the beef. And that's a good sign, because whilst you're roasting, then the fat is actually giving the joint moisture, you know, so it's keeping it nice and moist, which makes for a much better joint. In order to determine, you know, what, what we're looking for, you've got yeah. to bear in mind that all meat is, is simply, it's muscles, which are bundles of fibres held together by connective tissues, right? right? Mm -hmm. So it's all to do with muscles. And so in order to determine whether the animal, the section of the animal, is good for a particular method of cookery, ask right. the butcher to say, well, you know, top side or whatever joint, where does that come from in relation to the animal's body? Can you open your legs a little bit? Oh, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> <laughs> top side and silver side. If I do this to you... Yeah? Nothing. If I do this... Ah! That's a bit more painful, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's tender there. Right? And so the tender joint is the top side, and that's oh, this God. section of oh, meat here. And the silver side is the outside, which isn't tender, because it, when I did that, there was no reaction. Yeah? You know why there was reaction. I know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we won't go into that. <laughs> we okay. shall mention that. Right. So top side, silver side, good I joints see. for roasting. We'll does do the it. fact that it's tender there and it's not quite so tender there reflect in the meat as well? Yeah, it does. Okay. So, in other, so in other words, top side really is... It's more tender. More tender than, than the silver, silver side. And the more muscle, the more movement, then uh -huh. the tougher the joint's going to be. For example, there, there's a fillet steak. Uh -huh. The fillet lies right deep inside the rib cage, hardly any movement at all, so it's just melt in the mouth. What we're going to use for the barbecue is we're going to take some bits and pieces that I've already ordered. Right. Okay, I phoned the guy up and, and uh -huh. I've asked him for some bits and pieces. Uh, and we'll give him a shout in a second. Um, but I've ordered things such as, I mean, just look at the meat. I mean, it's good quality meat. So we've got, we've got some nice top side. We've got some chops, mm -hmm. some of those sausages, I mean, look at the size of them. The fabric. That's fantastic. I mean, and they're real skin stuff. Henry! Okay, and it's usual quality, I hope. Mm -hmm. All right, smash them. All right. Done. You put that on my account, young man. Thank you very much. Yeah, don't put it on mine. <laughs> right, let's go. After you, sir. Oh, after you. OK, we're going to marinate these top side steaks, Rick, before barbecuing them. There are two reasons why we should use a marinade. First of all, I wanted to tenderise the meat, even yeah. more tender than this lovely joint is at the moment. Uh -huh. You know, because there's nothing wrong with a nice tender joint. But more importantly for me, is that we're adding flavour. Because of the ingredients that we're using, we're adding flavour to the meat. And that's got to be a good thing. I've already roughly chopped the onion. Uh -huh. And because we're not serving the marinade with the steaks, uh. it doesn't matter what they look like. To that, some roughly chopped, and it really is roughly chopped parsley. Do you want to drop that into the bowl for me, Rick? Please? Yeah, we'll do. I'll find a use for you, don't worry. I'll stop your misbehaving. Yeah, I thought you might somewhere yeah. on the line. 
And I've washed my hands as well. Yeah, I noticed that. I didn't tell you what I washed them. <laughs> there you go, sir. All right, that's, that's really good. Let's bring this forward. We've got two fluid ounces of, uh, of oil. Any oil? In general terms, a nice corn oil is okay. Ideally an olive oil. You right. Know, but as long as it's a good clean oil, then that's okay. Mm -hmm. To that, we're going to add four fluid ounces of a red wine vinegar. The reason why we add the red wine vinegar is because it gives us a nice sharpness to the marinade and it'll penetrate through the meat. There you go, sir. All right, that's good. Um, straight into the onion rack with that. Don't have to mix it up. No, it? no, just whack it in. Okay, 12 fluid ounces of uh, good cheap red wine. That's all you get in this house. <laughs> I yeah. wasn't going to say anything about that. My <laughs> God, I was just grateful for a glass, you know. Whack it in. This is half the fun, you know. Okay, that's starting to look good. Right. You know what these are, of course, don't you? Yeah, my rhododendron. <laughs> <laughs> you wish they were. Uh, ba that's Baileys. right, they are yeah. fresh Baileys. These are smashing. Wonderful flavour from this stuff. I think that's the first time I've seen fresh Baileys. Yeah. I always get them in the, in the packet. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with using dried herbs, but I think you've got to bear in mind that when you use dried herbs, the flavour's always stronger, mm -hmm. um, and so you need to use less, you know. Let's make uh, it come alive now, and we do that by adding the herbs. So a couple of bay leaves, which we drop in. Right. If you'd like to add a pinch of tarragon. Now, I know it sounds silly. I've heard right. the expression a pinch, pinch before. Yeah. I mean, You've had it, actually, haven't you? The inside <laughs> of your leg. That's right. I mean, is that a pinch? That's a pinch. That's a pinch. That's right. Mm -hmm. Six black peppercorns. Right. What about this? Right, a pinch of that. I can't get your fingers in. Yes, I can. And again, you know, this, this, there's nothing wrong with this. This is rosemary. There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with a dried herb. Fresh herbs are better. There's no question about it, you know. Mm -hmm. But not everybody can get access to fresh herbs. No. So there's nothing wrong with them, providing you use in moderation. Okay, let's bring that forward. That one's um, a bit of a mixing round, just so that the ingredients are blended. That's now ready for the meat. So all we do is insert the chunks. Make sure that they're pressed right down. That smells good already, you know. The, the, the second important point in, in, a, in soaking something in marinade mm. is the time in which you leave it in the marinade. Yeah. And th there's no hard, fast rules. It very much depends upon, you know, how much time you've got available. Um, but I mean, we could literally put that into the refrigerator now and we could leave it for a good couple of days and it would improve. You know, it wouldn't go off. It would actually improve. So, but yeah, sure, does it depend on what sort of meat it is? Yeah, well, I mean, that's an important point as well. And I mean, if you, the cheaper the cut of meat, mm. then the longer that you should really leave should it in the marinade. Yeah. But the interesting thing is, though, that what you're saying is, because the English weather is so unreliable, yeah. I could, if the weather did suddenly go on me, it could actually stay in the fridge for a few days, and I'd still be all right. That's right. This can go in the refrigerator. <coughs> well, we go and get the, uh, the barbecue ready. Well, this is something else, isn't it? <coughs> it is a bit special. A little thing that I knocked up. You yeah. Know. No, you knocked up. Come on. Well, no, I have to own up. I didn't knock this one up. Yeah. This was actually done for me. You've also got all the bits and pieces that you need. Yeah, I think I got the right things out of pure ignorance. So. Well, I mean, these these are good, you know, because there's a, there's enough distance between the bit where you're going to pick up the hot food and yeah. your hands, and the two should never really meet, you know. <laughs> I yeah. really hope not. not in a my brush job. a brush is always a good idea because we need to put a little bit of oil or something, you know, on the meat, or marinade perhaps as well. Right. Um, the water sprayer, that's very, very important, because as, the, as the, the fire builds up, we want to dampen it slightly. Just a quick spray like that does it for us, you know. And the fire lighters. Now, shall I show you how to lay a barbecue? Please. Okay. Ever so simple. These are actually log fire lighters, which uh -huh. are fine. The thing about a barbecue is that you don't pour white spirit on all things. <laughs> no, pure vodka. <laughs> <laughs> well, you get a lovely flavour with that, but it's a little bit expensive, you know. Okay. Now you can't pour paraffin or things on there. No, seriously, you know, it's 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 not a good idea, you know. Okay. I mean, you're risking health and all sorts of things. Oh, really? So, and life. So it fire lighters is the one. Absolutely. Now, you have a choice of like, charcoal, yeah. or you can use these things called briquettes. I prefer to use charcoal because I think a it's easier to light. Uh -huh. um, and B, there's a, a, a lovely flavour from this, uh, onto the fire from it. Not too much on to begin with. Right. You want to be able to see the fire lighters. 
I was told by a fisherman in Pill, and this is not a joke, right. that you can use driftwood. Is that a gag or is that... No, no, he's telling you the truth. You know, the, the only trouble is it's a bit more difficult to get going, you know. Right, we'll see if we can get this going. The old house we used to live in, I've always wanted to have a barbecue, because I, I, I did the tour of Australia where they have the barbies all the time, as they call yep. them. But I'm not very good at brickwork and things like that, so I, I got hold of an old cistern tank, you know, that holds the water. Sure. Turned it upside down, got all these old bricks and built it all up round the outside. Bought a barbecue tray from the local garden centre, shoved it on the top, cemented it all round, so it really did look half decent, not as good as this. And then I got a load of plaster from the DIY shop and plaster it all round. Oh, really? And it per persisted down with rain that night. And uh, but I insisted that all the kids and everybody went out for this barbecue, so they're all there in their raincoats. But I didn't realise that there's all different sorts of plaster you can get. And I had indoor plaster. <laughs> and it's raining. And it fell in half. Did it? Yeah. Whilst you were cooking? It fell in half and the, the tank exploded. <laughs> it's good the way this has been designed, this, this barbecue, in so much as that it's fairly sheltered from the wind. Okay. We've got flames. We certainly have. We have. The thing to do now is for me to build a little bit more coal over it. All right, so that we catch it. Now then, the mistake I think you've probably made previously when it comes to barbecuing is that, and it's a mistake a lot of people make, is that there's the flame, therefore there's the heat. Get the steaks out of the fridge, get everybody around, get the wine poured, get the lager flowing, kick the dogs out of the way and get the steaks on the grill. Season them and all the flames are licking around the steaks and everybody's licking their lips and it's going black and black and black because that isn't barbecuing, that's burning. Barbecuing begins when the flames have gone, mm -hmm. and all you're left with is is literally white, what look like cinders, you know, in the tray. Right. How long will that take? In the glowing. Well, we're going to give this around about 40 minutes. Right. That's settled. We don't have to do anything else to that. Right. We can leave it. We can get off and get and make the salad. Sounds about that. Sounds a bit good to me. Simple as that. Come back and check it occasionally. Then. Go and see if we can find Joanna Bark. My favourite salad. I think one of the nicest salads is potato salad. It's economical. It's very, very filling, mm -hmm. you know, and you can eat it with anything. It's yeah. great with barbecued meats. When it gets to the time of the year when there's lots of lovely new little potatoes in, you can use them. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to skin them, just a wash and a scrub, mm -hmm. you know, boiled so that they're, they're not overcooked. Right. And then well drained. Now, I'm using, because we can do it all year round, I want to show you how to make potato salad with all the okay. potatoes. Do you let the potatoes get cold, do you? Well, you, you, in this particular case, pick waxy potatoes because they hold together much better, gotcha. you know. Secondly, don't overcook them. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, yeah, you've picked up something. I mean, they have to, we, we serve them cold, but we're better to actually add the dressing, which in this particular case is mayonnaise. Once mm -hmm. they're still a little bit warm, you know, they become much more gungy and lovely. Gotcha. All right. We're going to add two of them, and I'd like you to do the work, please, chef. <laughs> <laughs> some uh, chopped chives and right. some, a little bit of chopped mint. Do I do this very thinly? Or That's right and try and keep most of it on the chopping board. And door. most of your fingers attached to your wrist, if possible. Oh, what I suggest we do now, yeah, up. let me move those over to one side. Okay. Do the same with the mint rick. Right. And instead of, once we get to the stage of adding the, uh, the herbs, the, you know, the, the, the chives and, the, and uh, the mint, we'll keep a little bit back, mm -hmm. blend, you know, most of it in, but keep a little bit back, just to sprinkle over the top, it's pretty there. Okay. All right. I mentioned to you that the dressing in this particular case is mayonnaise. Right. Um, it doesn't have to be, it could be yoghurt. Salad cream? No, never. Oh, oh, sorry. But, you know, I said something terrible there, Yeah, right? that's, right. that's diabolic. Nowadays, there are good quality mayonnaises available mm -hmm. from, you know, shops, supermarkets, and they mm -hmm. are good. This one is a label-free um, mm -hmm. form of mayonnaise. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Absolutely, very important. All right. Is that spit the dog in the top? <laughs> <laughs> Carry on, dear. Okay. So, mayonnaise goes in. Not with your hands. You put that much on? Yeah, I like it really well blended. Off you go. And just mix now, it. gently. What we don't want to do now is end up with mashed potatoes. So it's a question of pulling the potatoes up. That's it, and incorporating them in. There it is. Okay. Great. Well, that looks good. I, that's ready now to be transferred into there. Right. Okay, which I'll do. So we get a nice clean serving dish. In it goes. Watching all the time to make sure that all the potatoes have been. Covered. Actually, I thought that would be swimming in this stuff, but it yeah. isn't, is it? It's just, it's absorbed it, which is yeah. great. Get it all out. Gently down. 
And all he wants now from you is a gentle sprinkling of both of those across the top. Just highlights it, you know, nice bit yeah. of fresh green. <laughs> Okay, I've made you uh, a mixed salad with tomatoes, lettuce, cucumber and green peppers. So let's put that to the back. Let me show you a nice dressing, which is a musical dressing, this one. A musical dressing? Musical dressing. I wonder when you get this in. Well, I've got to, haven't I? Okay. Oil. Uh -huh. And vinegar. Any the oil, oil I'm using is olive oil, yeah. It's oh. olive oil. And th that's ideal for this particular type of dressing. It's mm -hmm. called French dressing, vinaigrette, all sorts of fancy names. Mm -hmm. It's a dressing for a mixed salad. Right. right. It's olive oil. You could use other types of oil, you know, mm -hmm. vegetable oils, corn oils, but this is the best stuff to get. Okay. And this is white wine vinegar, right? White wine vinegar. And, yeah. Not ordinary vinegar? It's, no, the, the, the ordinary vinegar, such as malt vinegar, is yeah. the stuff to avoid. The only, the only thing you ever use malt vinegar for is to sprinkle on your chips. That's it. All right. It's yeah. real macho stuff. Well, right. All right. The ratio we're going to apply these is three parts of olive oil to one part of the white wine vinegar, and mm -hmm. we're going to create an emulsion. All right? An emulsion? No, not well, <laughs> possibly. If it's that nice, it could become an emulsion, couldn't it? An emulsion? That's yeah. That's interesting. Take the top off. Okay. So three parts of oil, mm -hmm. which goes into the little jug. and one part white wine vinegar. You could also use red wine vinegar or any of the other fancy vinegars like sherry or raspberry or even lemon juice. Right, some black pepper. Smashing. A pinch of salt. Mm-hmm. Not too much salt. Let me put the top on. We've got to blend them together. Mm -hmm. We could spend a lot of time classically. The right way to do it is to carefully add the oil and the vinegar together and whisk. That's where right. the musical bit comes in. That's right, Mr. Wake. I, I, yeah. I should invent something for you, you know? Yes. And all you do is you treat that as a pair of maracas, is it? Well, depends which way you're facing, really. I suppose. <laughs> it's like a kibasa, like a maraca, I suppose you could well, just shake it. Yeah, what, Vi violently. Oh, really? But make sure the top doesn't fly off and hit me all over the place. Getting quite into this. Hey, it's good, isn't it? Alright, right, that's... that's done. Okay. You know, but it doesn't have to stay like that. We could, you know, I, I mean, I've kept it as simple as possible because it's your first time. Mm. It's your first time with the yes, salad dressing, okay. isn't it? No, I wanted to treat you gently. But I mean, if we were, if we were to go on further, you could add such things as French mustard, chives, garlic, anything you fancy. So, actually, you sort of build it up yourself and sort of learn. That's right. As that's long, right. long as the basic is that. Keep the ratio the same. One of the things about it is if you make it in advance, which you can do, you find that when you come back to, to use it, it might have separated. And that isn't a problem, you know. Right. Before you serve it, just give it a quick shake. Right. It doesn't go on at this stage. No. Right, because, you know, we've still a bit of time, we've got all the stuff to cook yet. Right. And it wants to go on the dressing just before we're ready to serve it. Just before okay. they're ready to eat it, in fact. Mm -hmm. You know, rather than serve it. All right. Oh. Right. Ready for the business now? Absolutely. Okay. I think I mentioned earlier, the important thing is, first of all, make sure that, you know, the, the coal is at the right stage, which it is, it's lovely and white. Nothing coming from it, no flames at all. But put your hand over it, not on it. Oh, yes, what do you mean? Feel the hot spots. Can you feel where there's certain Ouch, areas? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Always identify that first of all. Put cool. your hand across, not on yeah, it, not but right. over it. Feel where the hot spots are, and then we can, we can regulate, move the food, you know, backwards and forwards, so that if we need to increase the heat, we put it into a hot spot. If we need to decrease it, if it's cooking too quickly, then pull it back a little bit. Gotcha. All right. Yeah. You, you remember, don't you? Because you're yeah. going to be cooking it's not me. You're going to be eating it. <laughs> that's, that's why I want it right. <laughs> Great. Okay. First thing to do is to lightly oil. Lightly oil. And we might get a little flare up here which we can control. The grill. There's nothing worse than putting 
well prepared food onto the tray. You see how we got that little flare up? Well, we'll, I'll show you how we control it in a second. And it sticks to the tray, you know, you can't get it yeah. off. So you serve the tray and the food at the same time. <laughs> no, it's not good, is it really? Okay, so make sure it's lightly oiled. Like so. Okay, that's fine. The first thing that's going to go on is the chicken. You know, because chicken has got to be well cooked. You don't have a medium chicken. <laughs> right. Ever. Is there any best bits of chicken you should barbecue? And can you do legs and all that sort of thing? You can do, yeah, you can do anything. anything. You can do anything at all. It's always easier to, to do chicken which is free from bone, but it's less fun to eat. So these go on first. I'm going to put them skin down. Now what will happen is that as we start to cook, as the, as the heat, you know, attacks the, the meat, yes. the fat will come from the meat, go on there and that will increase the flame. So it's at that point that we've got to watch. You know, there's nothing happening at the moment. Right. Very simple indeed. Okay, so that's the chicken. We need to season that. I notice you've, you've actually not put it on one of the warmest parts. If I did that, if I gave it to an area which was intense in heat, mm -hmm. right, then it would cook too quickly. Right. without cooking the chicken right through. I want the chicken to cook slowly, steadily, so that we penetrate right through, gotcha. you know, the whole of the okay. meat. Because there's nothing worse than, than uh, poorly cooked chicken, you know. Horrible. Some of the old black pepper. Right. Lots of flavour in that. A little bit of salt, from a great height, so that it doesn't go on in large clumps, you know. If you, if you sprinkle oh, right. it from a great height like that, yeah. then you get a very fine sprinkling of salt. Right, that's them on. The next thing is the pork chops. Now we made the marinade for the beef, mm -hmm. and I thought what might be nice would be to put a nice spicy marinade on the pork chops, but a marinade that you don't soak the meat in, one that you either brush on or you dip the meat in. And this is it. It's a combination of Dijon mustard, English mustard, honey, brown sugar, and soy sauce. All, we simply melt it, you know, and then uh, cool it down, simple as that. So the soy sauce and the honey is the liquid part That's of. right, that forms it. Oh, that's fantastic. It's nice, isn't it? It's really good. It'll just really sharpen up the pork chop. So that goes in like that, both sides. Wonderful colour as well. Oh, <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, that yeah. is fantastic, yeah. Well, that really is good, that. Right, it's all starting to happen here now. Now the sausages. I'm a great sausage fan. I think sausages are a really good barbecue, especially for well, kids. Well, good now, sausages well. are, are good. Yeah. I mean, these ones that we got from the butchers, they're fantastic. Yeah, they are. They're good. Aren't they? How do you stop them splitting? Prick them. Uh huh. Which we'll do, you know, as we're going along. You watch the sausage, and if it looks as though it's expanding at too great a rate, then all you do is, with a fork, just give them a couple of injections. Right. You know. Okay. That's all you've got to do. That's fine to begin with. Now, it's starting to happen, but I want to get a bit more activity going. So what I'm going to do is start to bring the ingredients in. I haven't put the steaks on, right? Because we want to wait a little bit before, you know, the crowd come round, and then we'll, we'll get the steaks on at the last moment, right. right? I also didn't grease the sausages. I didn't brush them with fat at no. all. Usually sausages have quite a high proportion of fat in them, uh -huh. and therefore it's usually not necessary to do that. But again, you know, you've got to watch, make sure that they're not sticking at the beginning which they're not. But if it looks as though they're, they're sticking in the slightest, then all you've got to do is a very light brush like that. One, two, three, four. Turn them over. The more you move the food around, the better and the greater the control of the situation. You know, so you don't wait for that half of the sausage to be cooked before you turn it over. Right. You know, okay. or that half of the pork chop. You, you regularly turn it over. So with the sausages, you know, you keep them on the move. Well, come on, Chef. I don't know why I'm doing this when you should right. be doing it. Let's swap places. Have a fork in your other hand as well, just okay. in case you need it. Now, if you turn the chickens over. Oh, this is quite a comfortable job I've got now. <laughs> this, is, this is one. The, the smells are good, though. I think they're really good. You want a distinct taste in the pork chop, you know, so that it's not spread. Look at that. That's oh, great. That's fantastic. Isn't it good? Yeah? Yeah. Oh, that really is. That's brilliant. Yeah, that's impressive, isn't it? Now what I want to do is start bringing the steaks out. So if you could move the chickens right over there. So we're, we're moving back now, you know, because we okay. brought them forward, increased the heat, increased the temperature, uh -huh. speeded things up. Now we're ready to slow that down so we've got the hot area for the steaks. 
If I move the sausages over, can yeah. they look a bit more down than the... That's good. Than the, than the chop. You really are in control of the situation, aren't you? Well, you I'm, are, seriously. I am, I actually... It sounds silly, but I actually feel in control. And that's, yeah. I suppose that's... I suppose that's one of the reasons why a lot of men shy away from cooking a bit. I mean, I have, to a certain extent, in as much as you... If you feel it's going to go wrong on you, you tend to... Yeah, shy away from sure. it. But I do feel very confident. I don't feel at all that it's all going to go wrong. Right, probably. steaks. You remember, we had, you know, each one was like half a cow that Yeah, way. you suggested we cut them. Yeah, I have done. I've already cut oh, them. great. Save you the job. If you'd like to pull them forward so that they don't drip it, they're still in the marinade, okay? Right. Yeah, it's a winner. Look at that. They've really, they've changed oh. colour. Have a smell of that. That's oh, fantastic. It's good, isn't it? So right. Down the centre. In a hot bit, is that right? In a hot bit. Is that a note? Fine chunk. I'll get one more on, sir, for you. OK, that's good. Then lid back on. Yeah, lid back on. Push the stuff underneath. This is fantastic. OK, now you've got to season that. Black pepper first. Very fine that comes out. Smashing. What about the pinch of salt? The old I noticed, pinch of the old salt. I've learned. Definitely. And hold on, I'm learning from up high. From up high. Because then you don't get the. So let the wind carry. <laughs> You've got to calculate which wind the way is. But it's a bit like the old. That's what's that? Our parachute team. They've got to calculate which way they're going to. Oh, run, the. You know? um, yeah. Yes. They're whatever they're called. Yeah, it's the same principle. Not smashing. That's working well. When can I start fiddling? You can fiddle. Fiddle away. Oh, great. Yeah, that's it. Smash it. Yeah. yeah. Give it over. I mean, it's. It's, it's a question, as we say, constantly turning it over and taking care of the meat. Beginning to colour already, see, isn't yeah. it, you know? But it it's hasn't firmed up yet, so no. steak actually firms up, you know? It hasn't stuck either. No, it hasn't, it has it? It's great, isn't it? Yeah. That, that, that really is... It's so simple what to do. Well, I know Nina and Mike have been waiting for this all day. Is Jean coming? No, unfortunately, she's, she's not back until uh, around about half past six. She's in England at the moment. Oh, that's my extra steak, then. Yeah. Stephen, Stephen and Janine and uh, Helena are here anyway, so... Oh, great. They'll tuck in as well as your lot. The only way really to test it is to cut it, you know? Mm -hmm. All right. So I think we should do that. So let's let's pick a large piece like that one there. And if... Look for any loose bits, because that might prevent, you know, save you from cutting. If there isn't any, then make an incision, open it. Now right. have a look at that. That looks fantastic. It is. It's right, it's cooked oh. right through. Look at that. It's moist. It's not tough. No, beautiful. Right, the pork chop, same thing. There's a nice thick one cut through. I think we're ready. Come and get it! He's done this himself, you know. No kidding, him, really. Yeah? Very nice. Yeah. Right. I should get them sausages and the chips. Just okay, so I put them all on one of the big plate and then they can, well, yeah, and that's they can good. take from that's there. It. That's good. I wouldn't put too much out to begin with because if they get their drinks organised, you also got to coordinate the timing, right, so that the stuff is hot. Benjamin, how old are you? Ten. Would you like to be eleven? No, well, yes. he's ten as well, you see, I was here before. Why are you going to be here? Let's see your guests. Did you ever ask Daddy if the sausages were ready? I mean, he had half of one, then another one. Come and back and tell me, Gemma. You can, you can both of your children. No. no I'm just check, making sure I got the right stuff in it. Very important. Oh, I shall have to apply to the BBC for my own cookery programme. <laughs> What do you say then? <laughs> Nothing! Oh, it's funny! Tomorrow morning at the same time, Kevin Woodford instills culinary confidence in Rabbi Julian Neuberger. He's since discovered that it's possible to get a return to.